Hello guys, good to have you down here on the foreshore with me again. I've recovered from that wet, windy and wild, well not so wild actually, just really wet and windy uh, lark last week. I hope you enjoyed it, I got very cold and didn't last too long. But then we went down to the sunnier side of the street, we went another day back down to the foreshore. Some great finds. Okay, well let's see what I can find for you today. So what's the first thing we see? I'll give you a second. And now I'm gonna zoom into it. Here it is. Modern coinage. There, I'm just gonna check this area out for a while. Oh look, there's more. Lots of two pences there. Oh, that's a nice one. There we go, another bailiwick. What's this I spy? It's very buttony, but what material? Ah, that looks like a handmade bone button. Very nice. Really pleased with that. If you watch lots of my videos, you'll know that I really like bone um, and ivory and wood buttons. Here we go. Now, can you see why I've picked it up? There's some decoration on there, yes, on the pipe stem, but look at this. There we go. Southwark, that would have said there. Southwark. And here's the maker's name. J C R something. So we'll find out what that is and I'll put the information up on the screen right now. something down there I've already flipped it over I don't think it's gonna have a maker's mark on I think it's gonna be more of a stock item still nice to find one little fly button might be ultra fine edge but always like to find a fly button Yeah, look at this tiny button I just found. Isn't that sweet? Perhaps a glove button? And I'd say more 18th, 19th century. Wow, that is a real cutie. So tiny. I doubt I'll take these home, but I love to see these pieces of marble. Um, they're worked, you know, they're carved, and they've come from some kind of building. They're really pretty things. Maybe I'll take them, if I remember them when I'm coming back this way. 
Look at that glaze. It's almost like a zebra. This is what we want to see. An aglet's just popped up here. This is a lace shape, a lace end, otherwise known as an aglet. Um, so I'm going to just have a good look around this area and see what else I can spot down here. Okay, here we go, a rolled lead weight. It's a heavy thing. It's a day for buttons today and this looks like some kind of rivet from jeans or press stud. There is a maker's mark on there. It will be fairly modern but I'll still take it because it's cool. We cool. There's a little piece of a four or two part cloth seal. There we go. These keep turning up at the moment, so there we are. You would have seen me put these up recently. And now I'm going to pop over to another bit of the foreshore. So let's see what I can find further down the way. No sooner had I said that than this funny little token popped up. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get stuck here now because of this. I think I might have to spend a bit more time over here. It's a really strange little token, actually. It's really rounded on the back, so maybe it's not a token at all. I'll check that out when I get home and we'll see. Here we go. This looks like possibly a piece of Roman greyware. I'd say that's a pretty safe bet. And there you can see the rim of a pot.
Right, I just grabbed this up because there's an Uber boat charging its way down here. It's a button day, I tell thee. Here's another. And it actually has got a name on it, so we can do some lovely research on that. It looks like H. Culpin or Gulpin. Exciting stuff. Henry James Culpin, Master Tailor from Warrington, Northamptonshire. Born July 1847, died March 1909. Henry married relatively late in life, at 33, having moved around in the years between 1861 and 1881. He eventually settled and lived at and worked from premises at 27 Cowgate, Peterborough, with his wife Annie and their four children. Very little evidence of his house and shop remains, although there are still Victorian features on some of the buildings alongside historic Cowgate, Culpin's premises were part of a retail storefront row that was rebuilt in 1983. Take a look at the images of Cowgate. They date from a few years after Henry Culpin had died. However, this is what the area would have looked like when he was still walking the earth. Was this the scene that greeted Henry every morning when he arrived at his tailor's shop? In 1912, Henry Culpin's premises became the Peterborough City Garage Company, as seen here. This is the only photo of Henry Culpin's premises, as close to what it would have looked like when he was resident. If you'd like to find out more about Henry James Culpin, Master Taylor, check out the links in the video description. I'm looking at this patch here, right on the water's edge. So, as soon as this boat Oh, look, there we go. What's that? Broken, but little suspender buckle there. And it's got some patterns on it. Um, I'll hop down to this area again as soon as the boat has gone past. I'm going to jump out of the way any second now. Okay, here I go. Here it comes. Now hopefully that's washed some more lovely little bits and bobs in there. This is a bit of a silly take home, but I'm gonna do it because this piece of metal looks just like a leaf. And I picked this up to brush it out of the way, but it's actually a piece of metal. It's a sweet thing and I can do something with it. Okay, spot the find. This time we've got something that most of you love. And it's an earlier one than usual. There you go. Early to mid 1600s. I think just a little nibble out of the edge, not sure. I don't know, maybe it's fine. And look, there you go, the bowl's much, uh, the bowl's much smaller on these earlier ones and they're a lot more bulbous and then pinch in again there we are as we're doing okay so far and um, storms have really buffeted the foreshore so there's a lot of movement things have shifted about love that stoneware piece I found let's see how we get on up this end of the river. There we go, another nice piece of Staffordshire slip comb. You don't often see larger pieces like this um, so much these days, and I think the storm we've just had has had a real clear out of pottery, um, lots of pottery about large pieces. If you check out, I've mentioned her before, Portia Seashore on Instagram, she found some really nice big chunks of pottery the other day. Sometimes I think my eyes are failing me and others I think they're working okay. I saw that little circle from way up here. Little air gun pellet. So this is a super nerdy thing, but just a follow up from last week. 
I was speaking to some of my mudlarking pals and I was describing these uh, sort of squished, I keep referring to them as squished pipe stems uh, and they're almost like a dime, uh, not a diamond shape, they're almost like a oval but pinched at the top and the bottom. Now what my friends have noticed is that around the Georgian period you start seeing these especially on smaller cutty pipes, cutty meaning short. So yeah I don't know the rhyme or reason but it was just a style that I think was apparent in the 1700s and 1800s. I'm just a real sucker for these rose head nails, love them. I don't know what it is with buttons today, but I think I found another. Another tiny button, potentially. It is as well. Look at that. A ridiculously tiny button of some kind. Two part button. And I can't quite make out the shank on there. <laughs> it really is. A day for buttons. Can't complain. Love a good button. This here is something to do with metal, cast metal printing. And it looks to me like it's got. Okay, so that I've. Oh, 8 times 24. Maybe that held all the little cast lead type. I don't know. Maybe it's a spacer. I'll find out when I get back. What does it say? Four, eight, no, just eight times 24. 48 times 24. Ooh. Well, I'll find out when I get back because I love this uh, printing stuff, this matrix printing. All right, take that one home. Okay, I'm in yet another spot. The rain has just started, but it's okay so far. And uh, let's see if we can just find any few extra little goodies because we're coming to the end of the day now but I've got hope that there might be a few more things kicking about all right let's see so I've gone back to the place I started and I think I'm on a roll with these blooming broken buckles. What is it with me and broken buckles? So, as I said last week, this is a part effect, a part of an artifact. Now that would have been nice had it been whole. Never mind. I'm just going to keep working through this stuff down here and then I will call it a day. I've actually been resisting doing this and I do it all of the time but look at this I can't resist anymore look at this monster pin pile look at all these pins 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 don't worry about my fingers they are fine look at them monster pin pile all coming from up here There they go. Hairpins, dress pins, as far as the eye can see. Well, look at this strange little piece of glass I picked up. That's a funny little wiggle there, isn't it? I'm going to keep that. It's obviously just, well, I say obviously, I haven't a clue what it is. It might be from glass manufacturing around the area I'm in. Um, I'm just going to keep that because it's a sweet little anomaly. There it is. Now, what are the chances here? If you watched my video last week, you'll know what I'm talking about. Check this out. Guess who it is? It's our old mate, 
Joseph Bourne and Son. And so here we go, Denby Pottery near Derby. So this is a bit later than the fragmented bottle I found last week, which was from their Codner Park works. But there we go, nice to see that, isn't it? A resolution from last week. I thought I would say goodbye today from the inside of my little tunnel here. Um, so goodbye from me. Thank you for joining me. My favorite find of the day was that large piece of stoneware. I loved that. Really gorgeous piece of manipulated pottery. So lovely stuff. And I will see you very soon on the next Mudlarking with Old Father Thames.